वेलकम टू इंडिया मोस्ट कॉम्प्रहेंसिव ई लर्निंग प्लेटफॉर्म बाय यूज एग्जाम प्रेप इन दिस इवनिंग वी ऑल हैव गैदर टुगेदर टू डिस्कस वन ऑफ द वंडरफुल सीरीज दैट वाज आईआईटी कानपुर प्रीवियस ईयर क्वेश्चंस एज यू ऑल गाइस नो दैट इन गेट 2023 द पेपर विल बी सेट बाय द आईआईटी कानपुर सो इट इज अ नेचुरल टेंडेंसी ऑफ एवरी वन ऑफ यू इन फैक्ट द मोस्ट सिंसियर स्टूडेंट्स टू नो व्हाट इज द वे हाउ द गेट conduct gate will be conducted by the iit kanpur right and especially in measurement subjects as you all know that most of the students will not show great interest in measurements but trust me measurements is one of the easiest subject in the entire gate syllabus so we will try to cover some of the sample of the questions from the previous iit kanpur paper so that you will understand what are the real important topics you may be required to focus more i don't want to say that they are the important topics and they will get definitely benefited in the final examination i would like to say that they are very very high sensitive areas okay so very good evening to every one of you whoever are there in the live chat now let us address the questions specially which were asked in the year of 2015 as well as 2007 and 2001 as you all guys are aware of this fact that measurements is a subject that is common for both electrical students as well as instrumentation students let us try to cover the most uh, very good questions in fact i would like to say that most famous questions from both the branches so that you will really like and enjoy the session well before going to the actual session let me introduce myself as you all guys can see all put together i have an experience of 11 plus years of teaching all put together i thought more than 50000 students all across the country and of course in the subjects of control system measurements and industrial instrumentation as you guys know i am specially known for industrial instrumentation so without wasting the time let's go to the most important topic that is the syllabus as you all know that before going to start any subject the very first thing as a gate aspirant you must do is go through the syllabus of the subject as you all know that measurements consist of these seven important chapters and the very first and important chapter of the measurement is error and statistical analysis in fact i would like to say this is more of error analysis because many of you might be uh, knowing that at least you will be facing one question from the error analysis if you are an instrumentation engineer definitely you will be getting one question from the uh, you know uh, error analysis so <laughs> just yes very good and when it comes to the second and most important topic is static and dynamic characteristics i would like to say this might not be so a uh, vast topic as well as so important topic but trust me there is a chance that you may get a question from here also right and following to that measurement of dc current and voltage we have various types of instruments starting from the permanent magnet moving coil and electro dynamometer and moving iron meter rectifier type instrument what not there are many instruments isn't it so we have many instruments to measure dc current as well as voltage and coming to the most important topic that is measurement of power as well as energy 3 watt meter method 2 watt meter method and energy meter specially to measure the power and energy correct and then measurement of rlc and digital meters and cathode ray oscilloscope well madhuri kumari <laughs> good evening isha agarwal good evening well so these are the main chapters of the measurements if you ask me list out and i have listed out very beautifully but before going to address the actual topics i would like to say i have already referred the previous IA year iit kanpur questions and i found that the great weightage was given to error analysis so maybe you can expect one question i can't say that 100% you will going to get the question from error analysis but error analysis is a high sensitive area there is a scope to get the question from this after that i found that majority of the questions are from measurement of power and energy and then you can find most of the questions from measurement of r and l and c especially like potentiometer and bridges so these are the three topics which i found really very very important for iit kanpur paper however as i said there might be a chance you may get the question from any topic okay right so without wasting the time let's go to the first question of the day that is from the error analysis of course in fact statistical analysis before going to the error analysis let us see the statistical analysis this question was asked in the year of 2001 specially for one mark and the statement of the question is given like this threshold of a measurement system is dash any one of you in the chat box isha agarwal or madhuri so threshold of a measurement system is of dash 
so there are four options and you have to select one of the four options right so what do you mean by threshold first of all any one of you <laughs> what do you mean by threshold it is very easy to say suppose suppose it's very very easy to say suppose if you give 200 grams of rice okay then only i can do work suppose let us say I am a human being, naturally I require some kind of quantity of energy and that energy will come only if I consume the food, right? So I require every day minimum 200 grams of rice, example, I am taking an example. So this minimum amount of, yes, good evening Rufina. So this minimum amount of the intake, whatever you are taking to produce the output that is considered as a threshold. So here I am taking around 200 grams of rice every day, right, to do some work that is for therefore we call this particular amount as a threshold so now out of these four options which could be the possible option madri <laughs> yes minimum input which can give output yes very good so the obviously option c is the correct answer for this question so i can go with this and that question was asked in the 2001 probably it is going to be very easy and if you are my student then it will be damn easy for you correct so option c is the correct answer there might be a chance that some of the students may go even with the option a also but do you think that the option a is correct see here it was mentioned that the smallest change in the input which can be detected correct so this is actually resolution so whenever you see the minimum amount of change that is required so that the output can be detected or output can be produced that is considered as a resolution smallest change means resolution smallest input that can be detected or that can generate the output means that is going to be considered as a threshold so hope this is very clear to you and in fact if you get a doubt you have to recollect this particular example so that the things will be very easy now let's go to the next question here so <laughs> next question is really very good question and this was asked in the instrumentation 2015 especially for one mark let me read the statement of the question for you guys and if you want to answer along with me no problem you can answer or by looking at the question if you want to answer by yourself of course that is also welcome so let me read the statement of the question here consider the ammeter and voltmeter method of determining the value of the resistance r so what you understood here you are required to calculate the value of resistance finally right so remember this is very very important topic so please try to address this or using the circuit shown in the figure the maximum possible errors see the maximum possible error means limiting error obviously because limit error that means the error can be limited up to that level that's why it is considered as a maximum possible error clear so the maximum possible errors of the voltmeter and the ammeter are known to be one percent and two percent of their readings clear whatever the read is they are showing there is a chance that one percent of the error will be there maximum that is possible suppose if the voltmeter is showing 100 volt 1% of 100 volt would be the maximum error clear now you can see yes respectively neglecting the effects of the meter resistance and the maximum possible percentage of error in the value of r determined from the measurement is dash so they are saying that by using the voltmeter and ammeter method you are going to measure the resistance so what would be the easiest way to measure the resistance now so it is very easy to say that r would be equal to whatever the voltage you are getting here divided by whatever the current that is shown by the ammeter simple because the voltmeter is straight away connected to the resistor assume that voltmeter and ammeter both are ideal right voltmeter is connected straight away with the uh, in parallel with the resistance and the ammeter is connected in series with the resistor correct so if you take the ratio between the voltage measured by the voltmeter and the current measured by the ammeter then you will going to get the value of the resistance easy isn't it now let me go one step beyond that and tell you what is required to be understood here is many of the students they might know the answer and rufina as well as madhuri both got the answer but let me tell you without remembering any formula how to address this okay so now in the voltmeter they they mentioned that voltmeter has a uh, one percent of error and the ammeter is having the uh, error of two percent so what does it mean it means that delta v by v look at that so just give me one second time i will write down everything clearly properly so please see so <coughs> yes delta v by v into 100 
this would be considered as plus or minus 2 clear so that is the meaning of that and when it is of 2 percent it means that delta i divided by i into 100 it would be considered clearly as how much <laughs> this is equal to plus or minus of course the voltmeter it is going to be 1 and the ammeter is 2 so let me change this one so every one of you please have the patience and the students who already got the answer you also should have the patience here because I am going to explain the concept behind this right so now you can simply take in a simple way that resistance is given like V by I so what is most important is consider delta R here clear how we can consider delta R as you all can see resistance is a function of two different variables please try to listen properly whatever the algorithm whatever the concept I am going to explain now that will be same for every kind of these problems clear so the resistance can be written as a function of voltage and current so if you want the change in resistance the best practice differentiate the resistance with respect to partially differentiate the resistance with respect to voltage and then multiply with the voltage clear and again you have to differentiate the resistance with respect to current and again multiply with the delta i correct so many of you might be feeling that sir why you are doing this all calculations because we already know the easiest calculation no because why you require to know the procedure is there might be a chance that you may get a complex function at that time who will going to help you right so here whenever you are taking this you must take the modulus of this as you are getting the absolute maximum error clear so now tell me if you differentiate the resistance with respect to voltage what you will be getting here so what is this if you differentiate the resistance with respect to voltage you will be simply getting like 1 by i am i right because when you differentiate with respect to voltage voltage will be a 1 and you will going to get 1 by i and delta v is there correct and additional to that we are also having do r by do i do r by do i how much it will going to have anyway you have taken the modulus here correct so though it will become minus 1 by i square as we have taken clearly as a modulus it will become 1 by i square and again you will be having simply like voltage here correct so <laughs> now you tell me voltage along with that you will be also having delta i here so therefore i should write down this as a delta i here is it clear to every one of you yes good evening Naveen how are you you are so late for today's class right after getting this so what we we will love to do here is just divide this with the voltage here and multiply with the voltage here clear and this i square instead of writing i square here write i here and write i here clear so now what is there with you v by i it is considered as a resistance r now correct and again at the same time v by i here it is also considered as a resistance r here clear now think logically r is there common here and here so we can bring back r this set so then obviously it will going to become like delta r by r correct so right side what will be there here delta v by v correct and then plus i can say that is delta i by i here correct so now you should answer this very very easy way already you have this ratio with you now it is very easy to uh, get the answer just multiply with the 100 here and even multiply with the 100 here and then multiply with the 100 here so what is the value so delta v by v into 100 already we have seen that how much that is that is one person already i told you this is one person plus right so what about delta i by i into 100 already i told you that that is going to be two percent so one plus two obviously plus or minus will be there for the error analysis so it will be like plus or minus three percent here clear so why i have taken this much of effort to explain this because I would like to explain the basic procedure to you that is the partial differentiation because many books there are many uh, stories for written for the limiting error ultimately if you follow only the formula you will go into struggle and this is the easiest way there is a different different words for the limiting error some people used to call this as a limiting error some people used to call this as a absolute maximum error some people used to call this as a maximum possible error all put together everything is same clear now what would be the answer here finally the answer is plus or minus three percent maybe madhuri as well as rufina both of them are really getting bored because i have been continuously explaining but trust me you require this procedure okay now let's go to the next topic here <laughs> yes plus or minus three percent is the answer here one second there is a issue with the pointer yes yes just give me one minute yes we'll go ahead right so <coughs> next slide yes 
Uh, of course, this is a question and even this is also a very good question. It is electrical 2015 for one mark question. Can you read it and answer fast here? Right? <laughs> okay, Madhuri, thank you. When the V-stone bridge shown in the figure is used here. Yes, very good. Is used to find the value of the resistor Rx. The galvanometer G indicates zero current. Look at that, zero current. When R1 is equal to 50 ohm, R2 is equal to 65 ohm, R3 is equal to 100 ohm, very good. And R3 is known or R3 is within plus or minus 5% of the tolerance from its nominal value. Again, plus or minus 5% of tolerance means that is the limiting error for the R3 value. Clear? So, <coughs> uh, what is the range of Rx in ohms? This, I say that this is not so great question, but it is not so very easy question. Okay? Just you need to keep little bit your brain here. Now, you require to find Rx. Of course, this is a bridge and I can take this as a supply voltage here. So, when there will not be any current through the galvanometer, if the bridge is under balanced condition, if the bridge is under balanced condition, then obviously there will not be any current that can flow through the galvanometer as shown in the figure. Correct? So, if the bridge is in galvano, I mean a balanced condition, the product of these two resistors must be equal to product of these two resistors. Correct? Very easy. So, what is the product here now? So, I can say Rx that should be multiplied with the R1. Of course, the product of these two must be equal to R2 into R3. Very easy. Very, very easy. Correct? Now, look at that. Rx into R1 is equal to R2 into R3. And from here, we can say Rx is equal to R2 into R3, of course, divided by R1 here. Correct? So, what would be the nominal value of Rx? Nominal value of Rx can be written like this. Simple. If you want nominal value, just go with the plain values, you will go to get that. So, nominal value of Rx, in the simple language, it could be given as, how much it is? R2 value is how much? 65 ohms. Right? So, let me write down here, R2 is 65. And what is the R3 value? R3 value is 100 here. Yes, it's given there. So, therefore, I am using it. Uh, a 65 into 100 and then we have one more resistor here that is R1. What is the value of R1? That is 50 here. So, it will get cancelled two times. All put together this is equal to 130 ohms. Clear? 130 ohm is considered as a nominal value of the resistor. In fact, it is not having any limiting error. In fact, right? But you already know that in the calculation whatever we are doing, we are having a one idiot value that is stupid value is R1. Why? Because R1 has, sorry, not R1, I am extremely sorry, R3 is the one which is the stupid value here because it has some tolerance here. So, R3 has a tolerance here, correct? So, now, if you want to know what is the tolerance created by R3 in the valuation of Rx, then very simple again. Now, you can say you require to calculate delta Rx, correct? So, what is the best approach now? Again, delta Rx you require to calculate and the variable which has a tolerance limit is R3, correct? So, then it would be written simply as dou Rx, right, divided by dou R3, of course, into delta R3 here, clear? Easy, very easy, right? So, now, how do we get this one? So, dou Rx by dou R3. So, that means if you differentiate Rx with R3, if you differentiate Rx with R3, what you will be left here in a simple language, you will be left with the R2 divided by R1 into delta R3 here, correct? This is what you will be getting. Now, my suggestion to every one of you again is just divide with the R3 here and multiply with the R3 here, clear? And this value, if you look at R3 into R2 by R1, that is what? That is nothing but Rx here. Clear? So, therefore, what should I say? So, <coughs> in fact, if you rearrange this one, it is not so difficult. From here, I can say very clearly that Rx can be taken outside and you can keep the Rx in the left hand side, right? So, therefore, how can I write this one? So, delta Rx divided by Rx, that would be equal to here, delta R3 divided by R3 here. Clear? Now, if you want to multiply with 100, you can simply multiply with the 100 here, right? And this value is given as how much, right? You can even multiply this with the 100 here. And how much is this value? That is given as plus or minus 5%. So, therefore, I could say this as a plus or minus 5%. What does it mean? It means that as Rx is directly proportional to R3, if there is a 5% of, sir, <laughs> yes, if there is a 5% of error that lies in the calculation of Rx because of R3, then naturally, 
Rx also will going to have a tolerance of plus or minus 5%. Simple. Now, plus or minus 5% of 130 is how much here? That is very important, isn't it? So now, every one of you might really understood that, yes, there is a tolerance limit of plus or minus 5% or else the limiting error of plus or minus 5% in the calculation of Rx. 130 ohm is the actual value, correct? So, plus or minus 5% of or first of all 5% of uh, Rx is how much? So let me tell you here 5% of 130 is how much? So just take one minute here 5% of 130 it could be written as any one of you 5% of 130 yes in multiplication yes Madhuri actually that is a shortcut as you know that I will explain first concept after one or two problem then naturally you will understand that okay this is the way how you need to do never and ever try to follow the shortcuts without knowing the basic concept if you know the basic concept and then automatically you will be in a position to get the shortcut okay 130 into 1.05 so it will be 136 point because one <coughs> five percent of this how much this is 130 right so i am sure that 6.5 so five percent of 130 is 6.5 of course plus or minus 5% means plus or minus this correct then what would be the range of rx now so very easy here range of rx could be written now simply as please listen here we understood that rx could be written as 130 ohm plus or minus 6.5 ohm because this is a tolerance limit now now 130 plus 6.5 obviously 136.5 so i can say 136.5 is the maximum value of rx and 130 minus 6.5 obviously that would be equal to 130 uh, 123.5 this would be the minimum value that we can see so this is the minimum value now 130 minus 6.5 and this is 130 plus 6.5 this would be the maximum value clear so simple so final answer is going to be what option a is the correct answer for this question clear right so <coughs> sir i am student of msc math can i do aerospace engineering m tech under gate exam please tell me right probably you are in the wrong channel anyway but let me tell you if you are msc mathematics student if you want to apply for aerospace engineering maybe you are not eligible because aerospace engineering is completely for a technical department however i sincerely suggest that if you want to pursue aerospace engineering from iit madras go to the iit madras website and look at the admission column in the admission column clearly it will be written that if you want to pursue aerospace engineering from uh, you know iit madras for example they will list out what are the branches they are eligible suppose if your branch is eligible you can apply for uh, master's program in aerospace department clear that is very easy right now let me move to the next question next question is very good question now let me see madhuri will answer or else rufina will answer or isha agarwal or else navin who will answer this question so this question was asked in the instrumentation 2007 for two mass two sensors have measurement errors okay please listen this this is one of the good question and i have seen many of the organizations they provide the wrong key for this question so let us try to approach this two sensors have measurement errors that are gaussian distributed with the zero mean okay very good so that means the mean of the data is zero right variances of both are sigma one square and sigma two square very good respectively the two sensor measurements are x1 and x2 are combined to form the weighted average of x is equal to alpha x1 plus 1 minus alpha into x2 and where alpha is in between 0 to 1 so though it looks like a very big question technically speaking of course it is a good question i don't want to say it is easy and bluff you assuming that the measurements errors of two sensors are uncorrelated this is very very important whenever the term comes like uncorrelated i have taken the mean and standard deviation it means that the question is related to uncertainty analysis i repeat question now it is related to uncertainty analysis the weighting factor sorry the weighing factor alpha that yields the smallest error of variance of x is dash clear so that means what would be the value of alpha that you can keep such that you will be able to find the smallest variance of x see it is being an instrumentation engineer we always want less standard deviation as well as less variance because of variance and standard deviation both are associated correct so how do we approach this one first of all you must understand this one clearly that you require to measure uh, x value correct 
and that x is associated with the two data. One is x1 and x2. Clear? Sensor 1 is delivering x1. Sensor 2 is delivering x2. Clear? Two sensors are there. First one is providing x1 data. Second one is providing x2 data. Clear? Unfortunately, sensor 1, they might took lot of readings for x1. Sensor 1 itself, it is used for so many times and they have taken the mean value of the sensor 1 readings and they got x1. Clear? Right? Similarly, sensor 2 is also used for multiple times to get x2 value. When you take multiple times readings, you will naturally have average of that and that average value provided by the sensor 2 is x2. But what is the way that x and, uh, x1 and x2 are going to be related? That was clearly given. Yes, thank you very much, money. Right? So that was actually given with the, this expression. Clear? So what was the expression here? Alpha into x1 plus 1 minus alpha into x2. <coughs> Madhuri, any answer from your side? Right? 1 minus alpha into x2. Clear? Now, the question is, because as we have taken a lot of readings to measure the x1, naturally, the x1 set of values of x1 will have a mean variance standard deviation and they are saying that the variance of the data that is taken for x1 is sigma 1 square good that is variance right and this x2 variance is given like you know uh, you know sigma 2 square clear right now what i understood from here is naturally you have taken a lot of readings for x1 out of that you have measured the uh, you know average value and you named that as x1 similarly so many readings are taken for x2 out of that you got the average value as x2 here correct now first of all the standard deviation which is considered as a delta x1 here is given like sigma 1 because variance is sigma 1 square means the standard deviation is going to be sigma 1 correct and along with the same thing I can say delta x2 would be considered as a sigma 2 here. Clear? Now, how do we find the variance of x? Because they are asking that the minimum value of variance of x is dash. Correct? So, if you want to find out the minimum value of the variance of x, what would be the first thing you need to get? First of all, you need to get what is the variance here. Correct? So, how do we get the variance here? So, if you want to get the variance, you can do simply like delta x which is considered as a standard deviation here. Correct? So, delta x would be equal to what? <coughs> delta x again as I said, delta x would be written as a rho x by do x1 again like in the previous case whatever we have done into delta x1 right plus do x divided by do x2 into delta x2. This is the first equation you have to write because that is the way how you will going to get delta x. Now the question is, if you want to get the variance of this, variance means standard deviation square. Now the standard deviation is delta x, variance will be delta x square here. So if delta x square, how can I write this one? So if you square this, obviously you will be getting something like this, dou x by dou x1 whole square into delta x1 square plus dou x by dou x2 right whole square of course into delta x2 square and you will be having some product terms the product terms will be neglected as it is mentioned that uncorrelated because every one of you might now can say that 2 into what is there here dou x divided by dou x1 and again dou x by <laughs> dou x2 and multiplied by sigma x1 into sigma x2 when the readings are uncorrelated, if you multiply delta x1 with delta x2, the product will become very, very low. That is the reason why we sincerely neglect that product here. So simple here. So remove this one. Now we got the variance here. So what we will do is, we require to calculate the maximum value of this variance. This is considered as delta x square again, variance of x. And what about this dou x by x1 here? So see, this is x, right? <laughs> if this, uh, one second. Yes, if this is x, if you take dou x by dou x1, what you will going to get here? It will become like alpha square, correct? Anyway, sigma x1 square, I mean delta x1 square is how much? Delta x1 is sigma 1, so naturally it will going to become like sigma 1 square here, clear? Very easy. And dou x by x2, dou x by dou x2, that means differentiate this x with x2, then how much you will going to get? You will be getting like 1 minus alpha whole square here, correct, 1 minus alpha whole square into sigma 2 square here, clear, sigma 2 square, all put together, 
covariance will be zero very good right so therefore what should i say here is the variance in x which is considered as delta x square variance in x is considered as delta x square that is given as now look at the beauty of this this would be written as alpha square into sigma 1 square plus 1 minus alpha whole square into sigma 2 square simple this is correct now what do you require to know variance is this this is variance look at that variance of x obviously you got this one now they are asking that they need the minimum value of the variance and what would be the value of x uh, what would be the value of alpha that gives the minimum variance right so how do we get that so that means you require to differentiate this variance with respect to sigma because whenever you want to uh, you know get a maximum value or minimum value the one thing we will do is we will differentiate this with respect to particular variable so therefore i can say this function should be do x square this function must be differentiated with so do, <coughs> differentiated with the alpha correct and that would be equal to zero so if you differentiate this what you will going to get two times of alpha and of course it will be sigma one square it will not going to change minus what will going to happen two into one minus alpha of course sigma two square that would be equal to zero correct so therefore we can say in a very easy language two two will be out here so we'll be having like alpha into sigma one square that would be equal to one minus alpha into sigma 2 square here so if you take sigma into alpha uh, alpha into sigma 2 square to this side then it will become like alpha into sigma 1 square plus sigma 2 square one side and right hand side you will be simply having like sigma 2 square here correct so therefore what should i say alpha would be equal to sigma 2 square divided by sigma 1 square plus sigma 2 square now i would like to say one important thing this is the option you will be getting and most important thing is what would be the answer here option a is the correct answer for this question clear now i would like to say if you refer some of the you know shortcuts are so many many times the people don't explain all these things right but this is a basic logic behind the actual uh, solution now tell me any one of you have got the complete idea today in this lecture because I have explained everything clearly and this is the standard procedure there were almost around two to three times this kind of questions were asked in the gate examination tell me whether you got the clarity here or not okay because this is one of the wonderful question I could say right now let's go to the next topic that is measurement of DC current and voltage as I have seen yes sir very clear thank you very much Madhuri so <coughs> second thing is measurement of DC current and voltage I have found that the questions are very easy on this topic okay let me straight away go with the first question the first question in this contest is it's like this in the context of PMMC instrument that means permanent magnet moving coil instrument identify the correct match here okay this is simply like you know match the following Rufino Begum yes right good very good right so what would be the correct answer here a pair of springs aluminium formula there are only two main components of uh, entire PMMC are given here and this concept was again in fact previous concept as i said no you will not find anywhere easily so this concept was very clearly explained even in the regular classes in baiju's exam prep if you want you can go through there right now you look at the four options what would be the best option every one of you know that the pair of springs especially in pmmc they are required to provide the control in torque that is the first job of the spring here not only that because the springs are attached to the voltage source finally so whatever the current that is drive, driven into the coil that has to flow through the spring and then to the coil clear so that means spring is the connection for the current through the coil here so therefore what should i say here ultimately so <coughs> now you should tell me click quickly what should be the correct answer here before going to the correct answer first of all you must understand that the springs will going to provide electrical oh sorry this is i'm sorry i'm extremely sorry right so the springs will not only provide the controlling torque they will also provide clearly the current through the coil right and when it comes to the aluminium former it is also very simple aluminium former as it, it is also in the rotation of the magnetic flux naturally it will provide the damping torque because a dmf will be developed and the damping torque will be provided from there and then aluminium former on which we are going to wind the coil so coil will take aluminium former as a support if you want to understand the better construction 
it's very easy just go through the lecture you will going to understand that right so aluminium former will also act like a support to the coil because we will be having the you know all the way like this this is the aluminium former on top of this we will be having you know coil like this clear so therefore i can say coil will take aluminium former as a support so what would be the correct answer so very easy this question is right so option c is the correct answer already rufina has given the correct answer right now let's move on to the next question here this is a wonderful question but i would like to say if you refer the previous year questions whether that might be iit kanpur or iit madras or iit delhi anything you will be finding at least this kind of question one question okay this is called extension of moving uh, permanent um, uh, i mean like pmmc or extension of the voltmeter or ammeter okay let me go with the question here so a 0 to 50 ampere of course this is very high right 50 ampere current is really very high right so moving coil ammeter has a voltage drop of 0.1 okay voltage across its terminal at full scale deflection okay right the external shunt resistors needed to extend its range up to 0 to 500 amperes is going to be dash any one of you here right <coughs> so first of all we have a pmmc right so pmmc it's mentioned like you know just like that right so they are saying that full scale current and we don't know really speaking what is the full scale current and uh, uh, yes it's given that 0 to 50 ampere of moving ampere current right moving uh, ammeter, moving coil ammeter so that means i should say that this is 0 to 50 ampere current clear that is the pmmc indication because this is the equivalent of the pmmc or the permanent magnet moving coil and this 50 ampere is considered as a full scale current ifst clear this is considered as a full scale current now you must also understand that rm value we don't know but they are saying that if at all 50 ampere current flows through this at right, 50 ampere current flows through this then it will going to generate 0.1 volt what does it mean it means that i should say at a, at a full scale current it is having a capability to drop the voltage of 0.1 volt can you tell me what is rm now this is so easy if the current of 50 ampere is flowing through the rm or meter resistance it is going to generate 0.1 volt such a easy question here right so therefore 0.1 volt could be written as equal to 50 ampere <coughs> any one of you rufina or navin or isha agarwal or <coughs> you know uh, madri any one of you so 0.1 could be written as 50 ampere current into meter resistance so simple therefore meter resistance now it could be written as 0.1 divided by 50 of course this is very very easy so let me write down part of it here so what is the value here 0 0.1 divided by 50 so what is the value 2 milli ohm 2 into 10 power minus 3 ohm so that means you are able to find out what is the meter resistance here first of all you found the meter resistance so be happy with this meter resistance is found here very happy now they are asking that this must be you know enhance it to 500 ampere current means you know that this maximum capacity of this current is 50 ampere correct so but you want to enhance this to 500 ampere that means you want to flow or you want to send a maximum current of 500 ampere what will happen if we send the maximum current 500 ampere rufina tell me what will going to happen if you send the 500 ampere directly through the meter i am very sure that the meter resistance will going to burn in fact the coil gets burned right that's why what we do is we will keep a resistance shunt across parallel to this meter resistance such that the excess current will going to divert now right excess current is how much it can maximum handle only 50 ampere right but you have 500 ampere requirement so excessive current is how much 500 minus 50 correct the excess current is 500 minus 50 of course that is 450 ampere current you need to bypass when you are measuring this 500 ampere current correct right so yes therefore 450 ampere will require to pass through the shunt resistance clear but what is the value of the shunt resistance see it's very easy to predict now meter resistance is 2 into 10 power minus 3 at that time it is capable to measure 50 ampere now if it required to pass 450 ampere means obviously the shunt resistance should be less compared to the meter resistance then only it will handle more amount of current correct now whatever it may be this 
meter resistors and the shunt resistors both are connected in parallel so if they are connected in parallel the voltage must be same therefore i should say simply like r shunt into 450 ampere of current that is voltage drop this voltage drop must be equal to the voltage drop there that is equal to 0.1 because meter resistors and shunt resistors both are connected in parallel therefore what should i say here ultimately the shunt resistors must be written as 0.1 divided by 450 rufina has already given the answer anyway let us do divided by 450 you will be getting like 2.22 into 10 power minus 4 so let me write down 2.22 into 10 to the power of minus 4 ohms this is going to be the answer and you must also understand one thing very clearly instead of solving this entire procedure you can easily get by using a formula as you already know my intention is to explain the concept and then go to the formula so this is the concept and if you want to use the formula formula is so easy that is rsh can be written as a meter resistance divided by multiplication factor minus 1 and this m is actually nothing but very simple whatever the uh, maximum reading you want to measure that is 500 ampere divided by 50 ampere is your maximum capacity so m is going to be 10 clear multiplication factor is 10 that means you want to enhance the ammeter 10 times that is the meaning of that multiplication factor means clear so either you can use this if you want to get the answer but if you want to know the concept means you should go like this now this total setup is called as a this total setup is called as a new meter or realized meter which is capable to measure 500 ampere at full scale clear now let's move on to the next question and now it is a very easy question now i would like your support to answer this now whether you want to use the formula or else whether you want to use the approach that is up to you now a 100 micro ampere ammeter has an internal resistance of 100 ohm so this is rm here now meter resistance is 100 ohm for extending its range to 500 micro ampere very good the shunt resistance is dash so now first of all tell me what is the multiplication factor here rufina rls madhuri or anyone so what is the multiplication factor multiplication factor is 500 micro ampere is the realization you want up to that you want and presently how much you are having 100 micro ampere so 500 by 5 100 so obviously it will be 5 so the multiplication factor is simplify clear now you know that the shunt resistance you are going to connect so r shunt must be equal to meter resistance divided by m minus 1 what would be the answer so the meter resistance is how much we are seeing 100 ohms here and m is 5 minus 1 so obviously you will be having 25 ohms which would be the answer for this option c is the correct answer and this question was asked in 2001 for one mark now you see how comfortable it is i have explained the concept i have even explained the formula also right now let's move on to the next question so this is again uh, you know like uh, match the following question whenever match the following question comes i am really very very happy because the things are very easy right we can even go for elimination also right so pmmc straight away pmmc is capable to measure dc you know that pmmc is a device which measures only the average signal of the overall signal either it is a dc voltage or dc current whatever it may be it can measure only dc value clear and when it comes to moving coil connected through current transformer very good see see they have given current transformer the moment when you see the word like transformer whether that is a current transformer or voltage transformer it's easy if it is transformer it could measure only ac signal clear so therefore obviously b can be said as ac correct and when it comes to rectified type instrument and electrodynamometer instrument of course they are capable to measure both ac and dc however we will mainly prefer for ac measurement but they are capable to measure ac and dc so what would be the correct answer <coughs> a is 1 a is 1 means option d is wrong and b is 2 b is 2 means option b is wrong right so and c is going to be you know like a Uh, c and d both should be connected to 3 so what would be the correct answer option c is the correct answer for this question and again it is one of the easy question here clear now let's move on to the next question that is measurement of power and energy even the questions on measurement of power and energy are also very very simple let's see the first question asked by iit kanpur in electrical 2001 this is just only for one mark right so look at the statement of the question the minimum number of watt meters required to measure three phase and three wire balanced 
or unbalanced power is dash clear so if you want to measure the power in n phase system minimum watt meters or minimum number of watt meters required because you might be knowing that the watt meter is a fundamental instrument which is capable to measure power right if you don't know please go through the lectures you will understand minimum number of watt meters required how much that would be <laughs> minimum number of watt meters required would be equal to n minus 1 so that means if you want to measure the power in n phase you require n minus 1 watt meters so what would be the answer so thiru malai is there any separate online coaching for isro scientists no i am extremely sorry that as of now in baiju's exam prep we are not giving any separate coaching for isro scientist program but i will take your uh, opinion here to the higher management so that they will help you okay right n minus 1 what would be the answer here n is going to be 3 now so i can say 3 minus 1 obviously it is going to be 2 so that means if you want to measure three phase power or power in three phase circuits you minimum require two watt meters clear what would be the answer option b is the correct answer for this that is two watt meter method clear now let's move on to the next one here so of course this is also a good question electrical 2015 one mark question let us read this statement of the question part of it here a three phase balanced load which has a power factor of 0 0.707 very simple first of all you can write down this simply like cos phi is equal to because power factor would be written as a cos phi clear first of all try to habituate this whenever you got any information list the information things will be very easy okay so power factor cos phi is equal to 0 0.707 which would be considered generally as 1 by root 2 here correct so cos phi is equal to 1 by root 2 so what does it mean it means that in a very easy language phi will be equal to 45 degrees correct phi is equal to 45 degrees now you must understand that you have connected to a balanced supply first thing and the power consumed by the load is 5 kilowatt very good this is the total power consumed by the load right and the power is measured by 2 watt meter method 2 watt meter method is used to measure that i already told you if you want to measure the power in n phase power supply you require at least 2 watt meter i mean uh, n minus 1 watt meter right now you require to measure the power in three phase supply you minimum require two watt meters correct that's why they are saying this part and they also mentioned that if you add both the watt meters that is w1 plus w2 you must get five kilowatt this is a very very first thing you must understand clear right then only you can say the total power consumed is equal to five kilowatt right now the readings of the individual watt meters are dash so you know that when you add one and two yes in Baijus there is one to one mentorship for gate electrical exam yes yes correct <coughs> yes so you will going to get all kind of counseling as well as one-to-one -one mentorship also but remember that one-to-one -one mentorship doesn't mean that whenever you want you can call uh, you know you can ask the things right so usually there will be a regular interval of time when we will going to schedule with you and we will try to help you clear right so now coming to the point the readings of the two watt meters in kilowatt are dash so w1 plus w2 is given as five kilowatt unfortunately if you see all four options right four options when you add you know w1 plus w2 it will show 5 it will also show 5 everything will show 5 right that means you require another equation to solve this question correct how to address this one so we know only the power factor that is 5 and if you use the 2 watt meter method i presume that you might have gone through my lectures in baiju's exam prep app so where you can find the tan 5 is equal to root 3 <coughs> into modulus of w1 minus w2 divided by w1 plus w2 here okay so tan phi is how much here now so simple again tan phi means that is equal to tan 45 degrees which could be written as 1 therefore 1 is equal to root 3 of course into w1 minus w2 as we don't know what is this value divided by w1 plus w2 here clear now you can easily calculate w1 minus w2 here what is the w1 minus w2 now so that would be equal to w1 plus w2 divided by root 3 here correct so root 3 is there in the denominator here <laughs> be clear with this right so now w1 by w2 5 kilowatt you know 5 kilowatt divided by root 3 here so what is this value here 5 divided by root 3 just give me one minute time yes 
right? 5 divided by root 3, it is going to be around 2.86 kilowatt. So that means it's a very, very clear shot question that now when we take the difference in the watt meters, you must get 2.86, clear? When we add both the watt meters, you must get 5 kilowatt. So which option is going to satisfy this? Obviously, option A is the only option that will go into satisfy this. Clear? So, it's a very easy question. But remember that the formula what I have discussed here, that is very, very, very important formula. And most of the times, there are several questions asked on this formula. Even in the recent gate exams also, I have found that. Right? Now, let's move on to the next question. This is also one of the very good questions. Let me read the statement of the question. The coils of watt meter have a resistance of 0 0.01 ohm and 100 ohms clear so 0 0.01 ohm is the current coil resistance and 100 ohm is the pressure coil resistance clear potential coil otherwise pressure coil is considered as a potential coil here right so <coughs> their inductances may be neglected that means don't consider the inductances that is the meaning of that the watt meter is connected as shown in the figure to measure the power consumed by the load which draws a current of 25 amperes. That means the load current is straight away mentioned here as a 25 amperes. I am glad to see that. Okay. And the power factor is 0.5, pointed. Maybe uh, the power factor here, it was mentioned as 0.8 here. Uh, I feel that this is an inductive load. Inductive load. So please listen carefully. The voltage across the load terminal is 30 volt. The percentage error on the watt meter reading is dash. Clear? Now, I sincerely request every one of you try to look at this one. This is considered clearly as pressure coil and this is considered as a current coil here. Clear? So watt meter reading, if you see watt meter reading as a W, so the watt meter reading is equal to voltage indicated by the potential coil into <coughs> current taken, current indicated by the current coil into cos phi. Cos phi is the power factor of the load voltage indicated by the potential coil into current indicated by the current coil into cos phi. This is actually the true measurement, right? So suppose if I say true measurement, what should I say? In fact, uh, uh, first of all, true measurement means true value. True value of the watt meter, how can I say? So watt meter true value, so or else let me write down in this way. First of all, yes, watt meter true value, <coughs> RS true value measured by the watt meter watt meter true value what is the purpose of the watt meter to measure the load power or power consumed by the load correct very good true value excellent rufina very good so the true value measured by the watt meter must be equal to the load voltage whatever the voltage that is shown by the load uh, shown across the load and current that is flowing through the load and most importantly into cos phi this is considered as you know general value of the in fact true value of the power across the load what is this value here this is 30 and this is 25 because it's given like 30 is the voltage across the load and 25 is the current through the load and cos phi it is mentioned simply as 0.8 which is considered as a power factor so when you multiply this no need to do even with a big calculation also you can straight away get this one 30 into 25 into 0.8 how much that would be 600 correct so therefore i should say here this as a 600 watts clear that is a true value but when you are measuring this voltage across the load <coughs> now you see <coughs> if i say this is a and this is b i am very sure that the pressure coil is connected between a and b and even the load is connected across a and b only correct so that means the pressure coil is straight away you know parallel to uh, the load therefore i can say voltage indicated by the potential coil is directly voltage across the load no problem so therefore i can say VL is going to be how much here? What is the voltage? 30. So no need to do any much hangama here. But when you are measuring the current, look at the problem here. The problem with the current measurement is, current is measured by the current coil. Let us say that is I here. Clear? But unfortunately, the load current is something here. That is 25 current. And the pressure coil is also carrying some current. Right? Why? Because there is a 100 ohm resistance here. Correct? 100 ohm resistance. So let me write down the current that is going to the pressure coil as IP because the inductance they are not uh, worried about the inductance. Correct. So there is some current that is flowing through the pressure coil because of its resistance and there is some current that is flowing through the load here. So how can I write this I now? Now I can say this I as IP plus 25 ampere current. That is where the problem comes. 
because of this IP or the current taken by the pressure coil, the entire problem comes. Usually the pressure coil resistance must be infinite, very, very high because the pressure coil or the potential coil should act like an ideal voltmeter. Clear? But as it is having 100 ohms, 1000 ohm resistance, it will draw some amount of the current. Now tell me how much amount of current that will be taken here by IP here. Can I write IP as the current that is flowing through the pressure coil or the potential coil, which is equal to 30 volts. Because the voltage across that is 30 volt only divided by what was the resistance? 100 ohms here. Correct? Sorry, 1000 ohm. So what is the value here? 30 divided by 1000. Correct? Very good. <laughs> right? So 30 divided by 1000. That is nothing but 0 0.03 ampere current here. Correct? 0 0.03. Now, anyway, cos phi is 0.8 here. I don't require to much uh, pay much attention here. Now, if you go for measured power here, so that is Wm is a measured power. So, what would be the value? That is 30 into IP is 0 0.03 here plus 25. So, all put together, it will become like 25.03 into 0.8. So, what would be the value of the measured power now? So, voltage indication doesn't have any problem but the current indication has a problem here that is the matter of the uh, topic here so 30 into 25.03 of course that should be multiplied with the 0.8 here so what is the value here 600.72 watts this is going to be your measured power clear measured power is this and the true power is this then it's very easy to get the final answer here how does we can do this one see still Everything is cakewalk here now, right? So, <coughs> true power is 600 watts. Every one of you calculated. And measured power, I have calculated and it came around 600.72 watts here. Then, what is the percentage of error now? Because they want the percentage of error, correct? So, percentage of error could be written as equal to measured power, that is Wm, minus true power Wt, divided by Wt into 100. Now you have every value for about calculate this and tell me what would be the answer here. Clear? So WM 600.72 I can say here minus and 600 watt here, right? So this divided by true value is 600. All put together, this is going to be equal to 1.2 into, yes, <laughs> 1.2 into 10 power minus 3 into 10. So it is 0 0.12 percentage here. Clear? So, 0.12% is the correct answer, Rufina. Have you clear with this concept? Yes, the concept is clear. So, it is very easy. Again, again, don't try to follow, uh, you know, big, big formulas here and there and try to mug up some formulas and work out. This is the easiest way. Look at what pressure coil is indicating or potential coil indicating and look at what current coil indicating. Product, multiply those two with the power factor, then you will go to get the power measure. Clear? So, is it okay? Now let's go to the next topic that is measurement of RLC, okay, right, the first question is very easy here, IN 2015 one mark question, let me read the statement, the bridge most suited for the measurement of four terminal resistors in the range of 0 0.001 ohm to 0 0.1 ohm is dash, see many of the students they might not know what is the meaning of four terminal, but you might be knowing that this is a very very low range resistance, correct, so out of all this, the only bridge which is capable to measure very very low resistance is Kelvin double bridge. Clear? Option B is the straight, straight answer for this question. Every gate aspirant knows this. <coughs> I don't require to explain so much about this because it's a very very damn easy question. Now let me go to the next question. This is comparatively better question I would say. So let me tell you or let me uh, read the statement of the question. If the deflection of the galvanometer in the bridge circuit shown is 0 then the value of resistance r is dash ohm i will give some time okay one minute time try to answer this question what is the best way to answer this so they are asking what would be the value of rx here clear so in fact rx right so what is the value of rx here such that the bridge will be in balanced condition so this question if you follow again the formula it will be difficult to remember the formula for this bridge first of all so it is always obviously better to go with the basics just convert this delta into star how do we convert this delta into star you can simply write down a resistor here and write down a resistor here and write down a resistor here clear so my suggestion is first of all try to keep this as a here and this as b here 
and keep this as C and this as a D and write down this as N here. Clear? So when you are trying to convert this star to delta here, you require three individual resistors now, right? So let us call this as a R1 here and let me call for time being, you know, uh, this as R2 here and let me take this resistors as R3 here. Clear? What are the R1 and R2, R3 values? R1 is very straightforward. R1 is equals to, so R1 is here. This is R1, correct? In star. So that can be uh, possible to get with this multiplication of these two resistors, okay? So this and this, multiplication of these two, 100 into 200, of course, divided by all three resistors, 100 plus 200 plus 100. So how much that is? 400 here. So what is this value here? So I can say, so this is equal to how much? So 200 divided by 4, of course, that is equal to 50 ohms, isn't it? So let me write down this as a 50 ohms straight away, easy. And then what about R2 here? R2 is also again, it is, uh, you know, like uh, after applying the transformation, that is start to delta conversion, you will be getting R2 also. Look at where is R2 here. R2 is this resistance, correct? This resistance is possible to get when you multiply with 100 and 200 ohm. Again, the same story like R1. So, in fact, R2 and R1 will have the same calculation. So, therefore, let me write down this as 50 ohm here. No, Rufina, wrong answer. You work, try it once again. This is the wrong answer you have given. Oh, I think you might be giving the value of R2. I am sorry. Right. What about R3 here? So, R3 resistance. Where is R3 here? R3 is the resistance, uh, you know, here. This is R3. How do we get R3 here? Look at that. Right? R3 is the resistance that you require to get. And 100 ohm is there. 100 ohm is there here. Correct? So those two things we need to multiply. So 100, 100 divided by 400. How much that will be? That will be equal to 25 ohm. Clear? So these are the resistors what you will going to get. However, you need to redraw the bridge here now. So again, what should I say here is put this a b c d then the things will be so easy and straightforward to you right so a is here and of course b is here and as i was saying c is here and d is here correct and you all know that here clearly we have drawn the bridge here so let me take here clearly that a to b what is there here so two volts okay, so let me write down this as a two volts simple now a to d you have 100 ohms there is no change in this resistance so let us write down this is easy first of all 100 ohms whatever is easy first try to uh, you know combine those things so that you will going to get confidence there okay right so next there is a to c there is a resistance of again there is 100 ohm resistance here correct very good right and then there is b here b to d rx is there there is no change even here also so I can say B to D, Rx is there here, correct? And now you see galvanometer with 50 and R3. This is the point where you have connected, right? So that means 50 ohm and R3. How much that is? So I can say here 50 ohm is R3, right? And you can say even like this also, 50 ohm is Rg. And additional to that R3 is also connected. Let me take this point as a P here now, right? So I could say this has a P here. So let me say P here. P is the point here. So any one of you tell me if P is a point from P, R3 is there and 50 ohm is there. R3 is how much? 25. 25 plus 50, all put together, I can say 75. That means this is 25 and this is 50. So all put together, I can say this as a 75 ohm resistance, <coughs> right? From D to P, right? So let me write down here once again. D to P, 75 ohms resistance and this is the line of the galvanometer here, correct? So let me call this as a P here, right? And now you must also see one more fact that from P to B, we have R2 here, correct? R2 is how much? 50 ohm resistance. So P to B, we have this one, right? So therefore, I can say P to B, you have 50 ohm resistance like this. And P to C, do you have any resistance? Look at that. Yes, P to C. You have R1 resistance, so I can say this R1 resistance all put together, this is also 50 ohm here, correct? Now, what you must understand is, even though it is not looking like a conventional bridge, but it is still a wishstone bridge. How? Because galvanometer is here, 
this 75 ohm resistance is the combination of galvanometer resistance plus R3. And galvanometer is balanced condition means there is no current here. Correct? 50 ampere current. That means what we can do here is this 50 ohm can be added with this 100 ohm. C will not have any significance now. Right? So we can re directly remove that C here. So look at that. If the C is removed, 100 and plus 50 all put together this is going to become like 150 ohm resistance here this is a magic here and if you apply formulas you will going to get wrong answer again right so and this 50 ohm you can take it simply here so look at the beauty of this one 50 ohm you can take it up to here right so in fact you can take out this one also right as i was saying this p now all the way it is connected here and you will be having 50 ohm here clear that is exactly the way how we will be getting the bridge now right now this bridge is under balanced condition so therefore how do we attain this one now right so the product of these two must be equal to product of these two correct so therefore i can say rx into 100 for example rx into 150 here that must be equal to 50 into 100 100 into 50 so easy correct many of you have already given the answer so rx could be written as equal to 53 times it get cancelled so 100 divided by 3 i must say that this is equal to 33.33 ohm resistance that is considered as rx clear this question was asked for two mass uh, i would like to say this is a simple question not complicated provided that if you have a will to solve this question so some of the questions in uh, you know measurements they require the basics of circuit theory also okay 33.33 is the correct answer for that and let's move on to the next question this is also a very simple question and i hope many of you know how to solve this question let me explain this and give this as a homework and you must solve this okay so 2015 it was a two mass question let me read the statement an unbalanced dc v stone bridge is shown in the figure at what value of p will get the maximum value of the output that means when you will going to get the maximum value of the output voltage clear any one of you so the easiest way is just to substitute the x value as some value right so then you will going to get suppose for example if you take x is equal to 1 then root 2 will be the value here and keep root 2 as a p value and find out the value of the output that is the easiest way otherwise the easy another way to do this problem is v naught should be maximum so you require to calculate the output voltage in terms of the p first of all clear how do we calculate that suppose if you say this is a vs here so very easy way to say this look at that right if i say this is a vx the first thing is let me call this as you know a here and let me take this as a b for time being and would be called this as a plus and this is minus here and you can even consider this as c and this as a d here clear so if you want the output voltage v naught easy way to write down this is v naught is equal to the voltage across this resistor that is v a d minus the voltage across this resistor that is v b d here clear so v a d minus v b d right now what is the way to get the v a d v a d you can see this is a open circuit terminal here so if it is supplying some current here so i can say the total current supplied here is i some amount of the current will flow this side i1 and some amount of the current will be flowing through this one i2 i1 all the way will flow in this way i1 so therefore i can say this resistor and this resistor both are connected in series to supply voltage so therefore you can apply voltage division rule therefore how can i write vad here vad would be written as the total supply voltage vs into the particular branch resistance r divided by r plus 1 plus p right so r plus pr so that would be written as r into 1 plus p simple that is vad minus what would be vbd now again vbd would be written as vs that should be multiplied with so the voltage across this resistor right so therefore it would be written as r into 1 plus x i would say divided by again this resistance plus this resistance correct so r would be taken outside here so if you take r outside then what you will going to get 1 plus x plus p right so let me write down 1 plus x plus p that is what you will be getting rr will be getting cancelled rr will be getting cancelled and that is your v naught here correct so now the a very logical way of answering this question is v naught would be written as so look at that how i have written uh, how i am going to write v naught now v naught would be equal to vs divided by 1 plus p correct 
minus 1 plus x so in fact uh, vx can be taken outside so <laughs> give me one minute time i'm extremely sorry so vx can be taken outside here so just let me take vx outside here so if i take vx outside what is there inside now inside you have 1 divided by 1 plus p right first thing is 1 divided by 1 plus p minus what else is there 1 divided by 1 plus p minus 1 plus x divided by 1 plus x plus p this is the most important step of the entire calculation now you got output voltage expression correct so but is it your final answer no why it is not final answer because you just got only v naught expression but what is the question the question is find the value of p where you will be getting the maximum value correct so that means you require to find out the value of p where you are going to get the maximum value how do we get this one simple so you should take differentiation of v naught with respect to p value correct dv naught by dp is equal to zero that means differentiate this v naught with respect to p value then you will understand that the p value will come all the way equal to under root of 1 plus p if you do it this is a very simple mathematical in fact algebraic calculation i truly believe that you can do this clear so therefore i can say p is equal to under root of 1 plus x that would be the answer of course the option is highlighted here option a is the correct answer for this now moving to the this question is one of my favorite question let me see how many of you will answer this this was asked in i in 2007 probably the last question of the discussion so look at this and try to put it in the proper way consider the ac bridge shown in the figure below with r and l and c having positive finite values they are saying that r and l and c are having the finite values correct so then when we will going to get the balanced condition that is the meaning of this one so any one of you quick answer from your side rufina or else isha agarwal or any one of you i'm very happy even at least one of you get the correct answer see simple you have a resistor here so product of this impedance with this impedance right so that means i can say r into r plus j omega l correct that is a impedance of this branch is resistance only that i have written here and the impedance of this complete branch is r plus j omega i have written this right so right side if you look at the product of these two impedances correct so what is this here so the product of this impedance is again r into what is the impedance of this one can you tell me what is the impedance of this one r plus j omega r plus 1 divided by j omega c correct so r plus 1 by j omega c is the this impedance clear likewise you will go and get it should happen to get balanced condition now we will see to get balanced condition this must be balanced condition this is what it should be actually it should happen like this so fortunately this you can eliminate now tell me is it possible to say r plus j omega l is equal to r plus 1 by j omega c do you think that uh, i mean is it possible or not now you can say very confidently that yes sir one thing it is sure that r can be eliminated here correct so okay fine now let me say if r is eliminated do you think that j omega l could be equal to 1 by j omega c not possible isn't it because this is 90 degrees phase positive phase and this is minus 90 degrees phase correct j omega l cannot be equal to 1 by j omega c and in another way what i should say is j square so if you take minus 1 it will going to become minus omega l it will be equal to minus 1 by omega c correct so if you multiply is it possible no why omega is the positive quantity c is also a positive quantity it is given as r l c are the positive quantities so omega is positive c is positive and l is positive omega is positive then this is a positive number positive number into minus so it is a negative number here but right side you are having a positive number how negative number and positive number both will be equal clear so it is not possible that means it is not possible not equal and it will not be equal it will not be equal clear so that means v naught cannot be made zero it's wonderful question as i said many students they will trap to option a but the correct answer is option d is it the good question or not madri and rufina you must tell the answer here is it really good question or not yes i really feel that this is a wonderful question clear so that's all about uh, these questions and i would like to give one question as a homework to you this was a question 
asked in instrumentation 2015 for potentiometer related question it is also a very very simple question how do we solve this one see <coughs> as i was saying from the starting onwards you always required to go with the basics if it is vx here i must say this is vx here right so you can all see here all put together we have a big resistor like this right so look at that if i say this is a ground here this is plus and minus means this voltage is minus v here and this is ground means and this side you are going to have what so <coughs> you are going to have plus v here correct plus v here right so yes 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 very good right so now i can say very clearly that this is going to be minus v here and this is going to be plus v here correct and exactly in the middle somewhere here we have like vx because vx is also with respect to ground here vx is plus here and minus here so the plus is exactly here right so now you must see that vx is actually taken across the alpha into r that means across vx this point is considered as now vx across vx and positive v you have alpha r so vx and positive v we have alpha r here let me write down correct and what about the remaining resistance total resistance is r so that means the remaining resistance is r minus alpha r so this is going to be 1 minus alpha into r this is the resistance here clear so yes very good right so <laughs> 1 minus alpha into r very nice so vx is the point here and minus v between minus v and vx we have 1 minus alpha into r and between vx and plus v we have alpha r clear so then what would be the best point to apply here simply like kcl right so in fact i would like to say those who are having minimum common sense they can see you can consider all put together this as a uh, you know very conventional resistor like this you can take this as a resistor here right and take this as a resistor here clear so this is your vx point correct so then what would be the best option here apply nodal analysis or kcl here so that means take this as i1 current here and take this as i2 current here so then i can say very easily that i1 plus i2 is equal to 0 because algebraic current sum of algebraic current of uh, you know current at a particular node will be equal to 0 what is i1 i1 is vx minus of minus v correct so i1 could be written as vx minus of minus v whole divided by what should i write 1 minus alpha into r and plus what will be the value of i2 i2 is here vx of course minus v divided by alpha into r that would be equal to 0 clear if you solve this because r r will going to get cancelled and from here easily you will be able to understand if you rewrite vx and just solve this you will be able to understand you will going to get 1 minus 2 alpha into v this is not a difficult question trust me this is not at all a difficult question only algebraic calculation you need to do to get this option that is option a is the correct answer for this question and it was asked for two marks now you must understand the fact that the questions specially which are asked in from iit kanpur if you see the error analysis questions are little bit slightly moderately difficult but they have covered each and every topic so systematically error analysis is very important and watt meter topic is very important and then potentiometer topic is very very important and this is a homework to you clear so that's very important and uh, you can see the the answer for this question is option a and take this as a homework i sincerely believe that you people will really work on this and get the answer anyway i want to give one more question as a homework and this is the question and you can find these two questions as well as solutions and both of these two questions are homework along with this third question also because i have taught you three important topics that is error analysis and bridges and potential meter uh, special in this lecture i have given questions from all these three topics utilize the opportunity and work out on this and please let me know the answers or the solutions in the comment box one or two days later again i will come back to the comment section and i will see your solutions and give the remark to you hope you really enjoyed with this lecture as i was repeatedly saying the very very important topics for the measurements in gate 2023 are the very first thing is error analysis second is measurement of power as well as energy along with the extension of voltmeter and ammeter of pmmc related stuff and most important thing is the bridge concepts clear so hope you really enjoyed with this lecture and it is really useful to you and we will going to meet with some of the very interesting topics in the upcoming lecture thank you very much